Hey everybody, it is so good to be here and I am so delighted that you have chosen to join me in my little demo here. Um, gonna give it just a minute or so to make sure that everyone who wants to catch the show can, can come on. Um, I'm a little bit early, a minute early, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, I am really, hey Julie, hey, I have the setup good tonight. I can read comments, I can see myself, and I can see my hands. So I think I have all the bases covered. <laughs> I don't have Patrick here with me tonight, so, you know, that's, uh, I'm, I'm, lone, I'm, I'm a loner tonight. But well, just to tell you a little bit about who I am, um, in case you don't know, my name is Julie Benack, and I am the little business Fresh Lotus Design. And of course it's a fiber business, so I wouldn't be here if it wasn't. But I also do a lot of different things that do not, uh, that are not specifically uh, knitting, crocheting related that way. I also do a lot of sewing. So what that, with that in mind, what I've always wanted to do is try to find ways to combine fiber art with sewing. So that's what I'm going to attempt to show you some uh, some nice ideas for you to try here, and I'm not sure if if I have lost video or not. I I am getting errors, so if you if I'm still operating, that's great. If I'm not, let me see here. I think I'm gonna start over again because I'm not sure. Or wait, let me see. Hang on. Hang on. Uh, no, this was not helpful. Was this helpful? Okay. Hang on a second, guys. Just not sure. Am I going? Oh, I am still going. Okay. Good, good, good. I'm so sorry. I was not sure if I was still going. Okay, good. Thank you, everybody. I had to click around a little bit, and I was scaring myself there. Okay, all is well. Heart attack averted. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, when we think of yarns, okay, we think of uh, how to use them to create fabric, right? Because when we weave, when we knit, when we crochet, we are creating fabric. So... Coming from a sewist's perspective, I think of fabric as something to cut and sew or, you know, other ways that, you know, that we use fabric. Um, and a lot of times we have beautiful yarns that kind of, uh, the beauty of them gets lost when we, uh, when we knit and when we crochet and in all of those loops that we make. Um, a lot of times yarns are so spectacular that you just hold them out and you want to see the yarn, you know? And even when we use it in weft, in weaving, once the warp comes down over it, it changes the look of the yarn. So I was like, what can we do to just show off the yarn? And the first thing that came to mind was a technique called couching. Now I'm sure you probably know what it is in general. It's basically taking a cord, um, a yarn, uh, braid, soutache braid, flat braid, anything, anything you can fit through your machine, and attaching it with stitches, machine stitches, to fabric. That's all it is. There are tools and attachments to your machine that are required for this technique, and I guarantee you, you have one or the other. There's, there's a couple different ways you can do it. So, I will tell you um, about the fabrics that I'm using here, and uh, kind of why I'm using them. Uh, it's just just for a little fun. I have so many batik fabrics because almost exactly a year ago um, this week is when the pandemic really hit and no one had masks. So I sewed masks until I was blue in the face. <laughs> in fact, Wafa began in April of last year and I wasn't able to do it because I was drowning in masks so I have all these beautiful batik fabrics um, that I was using to make the masks and I have them left over and I know if my daughter sees me with these fabrics out she's going to be like oh mom make me some more masks and oh my lord I can't make one more mask uh, if I do it will just be I don't know but anyway the fabrics are beautiful this is one of them 
and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some tips and techniques for using your machine to couch onto fabric. So what I'm going to do here now, I'm going to turn on this light. It's going to like be really blinding at me. So don't look at my face anymore because it'll be all yellow and pasty now. But it certainly does help for the camera. Uh, let's see. Blue in the face mask. Oh, you know, you're right. I never even thought of that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, my goodness. So anyway, let me see if we've got everything lined up here. Now, when you're coaching, when you're couching by machine, um, there's a couple different ways you can do it, and each of them requires a specific presser foot. Um, now, I know you guys have sewing machines in your closets. I know you have them. I know you may be afraid of them, but I said to myself, if one person is inspired tonight to get out their sewing machine and try this, that will be wonderful. I will feel, I will be thrilled. Um, this is not a technique for a brand new beginner sewer, okay? You don't have to be an expert either, all right? Just let me give you that much. The idea here is not to stitch a straight line. On the contrary, the idea is to be able to flow all over your fabric. And if you are a beginning sewer and you really, really, really want to do this technique, I am going to make a suggestion to you to remove your bobbin, and remove your top thread and take a piece of paper and just put it through the machine with a presser foot but no thread in either top or bottom and just start sewing and, and learn how your machine feels, learn how it feeds, uh, do some curves, learn how, learn what you do to rip up your paper. If your paper starts ripping up you'll know that you know hey I need to I need to you know raise my presser foot or whatever we're gonna go over that but just a suggestion you know to try it out so the first way i'm going to show you how to do this is with a dedicated couching presser foot now most machines have these feet you may or may not have them with your machine so it's it's important to uh to look through all your presser feet and see what you have it's usually kind of like christmas when uh, if you're a sewer you know all those presser feet they do all those cool things but this is the foot Okay, I'm gonna make sure that you guys can see it. The distinguishing factor of the couching foot is the hole that is right in front of the needle hole. This, this narrow slit here is the needle hole. This is the couching hole. <coughs> this is the hole that you would put your trim, your yarn, your braid, whatever. This gets threaded through the hole and then your foot just glides, it just glides along on it. Now, the best way to get this started is to actually thread the yarn and your thread through the foot before the foot is put on the machine. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. And you know what, let me get my, let me get my fabric ready here. And what I'm gonna do with this, when this fabric is done, I am going to, um, <coughs> I'm gonna interface the back, give it some body, and then I will probably, ooh, isn't that just send chills up your spine? I'm going to uh, interface the back of it, give it some body, and then I will be able to use it um, for uh, possibly a spinning bag, an um, e-spinner bag, um, an apron, or all kinds, of, all kinds of things. I might actually even use these as panels, decorative panels in the back, uh, the center back of some jackets that I'm doing. So there's all kinds of things you can do. So let's get it fabric on the right side here. Make sure you all can see everything. All right, so this is what we're doing. A dear batik, you're not gonna be a mask. You should be happy. <laughs> you're not gonna be a mask. But if need be, of course, we'll sew masks until doomsday. Let's hope we don't have to. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm threading in the yarn into the hole from front to back you want your yarn coming out the back of the foot okay and then I'm gonna take the top thread and I'm also gonna put that into the foot the only reason I'm doing this is because this foot is not open in the center so for you to be able to just tuck the thread around it so it would be kind of difficult to, to get your thread under there it's not a big deal but that just makes it a little easier and then I'm gonna put the foot 
onto the machine. Now, just to give you a little bit of word about my sewing machine so that you don't think that I have something, you know, you know, super duper. It's it's not, okay? It is an industrial machine, but it is very basic. In fact, I have the same machine with all the same stitches, all the same features in a um, just a portable version. Um, it's a Bernina. I love my Berninas. Um, but any brand of sewing machine, you will be able to find one of these feet. Now, the problem with this foot, and I'm sure you guys already know, and you're already you're like, oh, I know, I know. The problem is the size of the hole dictates the size of the yarn you can use. Now, of course, this is, this is a, a lovely uh, silk two-ply that I spun a few weeks ago. It's perfect for this, but I have other yarns, and I'm sure you guys have other yarns, and you spin other yarns that are like, wow, way big. Well, we're going to get to that, but we're not going to be able to use this foot for those. So first off, let's try this because this is really impressive. It goes really fast, and, and it's, you know, it's really cool. The other foot takes a little bit of practice, and I will show you, though, how to do it. So getting started here, my foot does not, or my machine does not have a lot of clearance between the foot and the plate, and that bothers me, but I just learned to work with it, I guess. I'll make sure you guys can see. So you can see I'm starting at a corner. You can start wherever you want. Um, I'm going to lower the foot. Now, another thing about this machine, it has a knee lift for the presser foot, and I know a lot of domestic machines do not have this feature. So your lift is back here you know, way back behind the, behind the foot back here. And it doesn't matter. It's, it's a little extra, a uh, little extra movement that you have to do. Whereas if you have a knee lift, it's fantastic. You just hit the, you don't, you don't have to move your hands or anything. Um, but not necessary, pretty cool, but not necessary. So we will get started here. Now, the first thing that we need to think about, um, with it with whatever yarn we've chosen because we're using the foot it's a small yarn is what stitch are you going to do you can use really any stitch any stitch that that because this is a zigzag hole so just about any stitch on your machine you could use but if you want to show off your yarn you're going to use a simple stitch um, i don't particularly care for a straight stitch and the reason why is because it just shows up as such a heavy line right down the middle of the yarn. So I like to stick with a uh, what I call a mild zigzag, not like the, you know, 1970s stretch and sew zigzag. This <laughs> this one is is a very long zigzag. Um let me show you here. Oh, I have to give it away. I'm going to have to show my other my other fabric. Oh well, you'll get to see it eventually. But this see if you can see it this is what the zigzag stitch looks like you see it's very long it almost looks like just a wobbly straight stitch it is indeed a zigzag stitch so all you need to do is make sure that your width of your stitch of your zigzag is only about halfway like between I don't know the numbers on my machine don't mean anything on my machine it's like a one and a half um, but it's not very wide at all. You don't need to swing way back and forth when you're working with a yarn that's that for any of these yarns really. And then the length is all, is also a little longer. But as we stitch, I'm going to talk about some uh, adjustments that you will have to make as you're stitching to get it just right. And of course, testing is always a good thing too. But uh, you know, kind of like that swatch gauge that nobody ever wants to do, you know. I'm just going to plunk this down and do it, and it'll be perfect, right? <laughs> well, maybe sometimes, but not always. So here we go. I've got my, my, uh, my lengthened zigzag, and I will, we will start. So, Oh, and another thing, too. I'm sorry. I keep teasing you guys. Make sure you start with a full bobbin. Always start with a full bobbin. I don't have the luxury of a little beeper thing to tell me when my bobbin is low. I just sew along forever and ever and realize that I've sewn nothing. So make sure you have a full bobbin. And, you know, I'm wondering if I actually took my own advice. Let's hope I have some thread in here. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Now with the couching foot, you, you can literally, you don't have to, you don't have to guide. 
the yarn at all. I mean, it just, it just goes on. Now, the one thing to keep in mind when you're doing this, when, when people couch by hand, they use an embroidery hoop. And what an embroidery hoop does is hold your, your fabric taut. And I'm not saying you have to keep your fabric really, really taut this whole time, because it's impossible if, you're, if your foot is moving and the feed dogs are grabbing the fabric, you know. But that's what you want to aim for, because what that's going to do is it's going to prevent a lot of, uh, can you see this, a lot of puckering in this area, like, it, you know, between your curves. And a lot of times it can be just pressed out. But what you're going to do is a combination of holding a taut and lifting your presser foot every now and then when you have to. Okay? With the couching foot, you don't have to do that so much, but you still need to hold it taut. And to make it easier for you, you can kind of, you can kind of make your path first. Like, I want to do this. So I'm just going to lay it down and follow it along. And I'm lifting my presser foot a little bit because if I start to see wrinkles here, I don't want to sew those in. I don't think you will, but it will just come out to be like a pucker. But this just gets to be lots of fun. And actually this, this fabric too that I'm using is quite challenging. When I did the demo, the little video, I was sewing on hand spun. And the hand spun is, or not hand spun, sewing on hand spun, yes, well it was, but hand woven it was hand woven fabric and because it was wool you know wool is very forgiving you know it's it's not gonna you're not gonna have any puckers or anything like that so this is just something you will you will find that you will have your fabric piece filled in with yarn swirls and swoops before you know it oh look at that i ran out of bobbin threads are you kidding me See, you know, this is just, I'm chronic with this. You know, I, it's like, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> okay, well, no problem. We have, we have lots more bobbins. So. so yes, in the event that you see nothing is happening, well, you could pretty much figure that you have ran out of bobbin thread. All right, so, no problem. Slight delay. Now we have to raise the bobbin thread. And there we go. Yeah, you know, I think I had a I had a good bobbin in there, but then I started practicing and playing around a little bit earlier today and ran myself right out of bobbin thread. Hello. Nice job. All right, there we go. Back in business. So this is all it is and you can see I'm I'm doing my best to keep the fabric taut giving myself lots of slack here giving myself a path to go and it's just fun and when you have yarns that are this small and you have a dedicated couching foot it just makes it a lot easier. But don't despair if you don't have a couching foot. It's no big deal. In fact, again, there's some yarns, there's a lot of yarns you can't even use a couching foot with. So what do you do then? I'll show you. And I'm also going to uh, tell you about another presser foot that I bought. I was kind of excited about, but oh, buyer beware. I'll tell you about that too. But anyway, let me see. Bobbin. Oh, that is the, the bobbin is the thread that is on the underside. Sewing machine has a top thread and a bobbin thread. And it's funny because my boss at work and I, we talk about, we talk about it lots of times. Like, you know, all these years we've had a sewing machine. Why can't they come up with something to get rid of the bobbin? <laughs> we don't have to worry about running out of bobbin thread. Um, but they have not yet, so... We are still dealing with bobbins. Let me see anything else. What kind of thread is in the bobbin? The same kind of thread as I have on top. This to me is a dressmaking technique, sort of. It is to me anyway. Um, 
the thread needs to match the fabric that you're using. So this is just a cotton, so I just have a nice all-purpose um, Guterman polyester and works great. But this, let me show you here, let's see the best way to show you. This is our couching. And now you see how it's a little ruffly here? I think I can steam this out. I'm pretty sure that I can. Um, but you can also create great effects with this as well. You can, um, you can tighten up your tension, draw it up a little bit, make it, uh, um, make it uh, what, what is that technique? Kind of like uh, smocking, like a smocked look. You can do that too. You can play with your tension and, and get some other effects. But you can see that all of the yarn is visible. The, the color changes in the, well, you wouldn't be able to see that too well in here, but the color changes you, you're able to see if you're working with lumps and bumps and, and glitz and sparklies, you'll be able to see all of that. It's laid out on the fabric just, just like, a, like a showcase. It just it really showcases the yarn. But I know you all are thinking, what, what do you do? What do you do when you have yarns that are thicker and a lot of our yarns are thicker at it I don't know if you guys saw the video I put up I got this yarn finished and it is so beautiful but what if you have a yarn like this you know I mean these every strand is different every strand is, has a different texture different color what if you really want to show something like this off well you can it's a little bit different it's just another presser foot that you're going to use and it requires a little bit more control on your part. So let me find what it is. This, this is the foot that you would use for um, larger yarns. And you can see it's got a nice wide opening. There's no hole that it's going into to, uh, to be too small or to get caught in or anything like that. Um, the needle hole is, is uh, it's 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 all together. Everything is there. There's no separate needle hole. It's it's all um, it's all just open. So this makes this foot really easy to use, um, which is a good thing because when you're working with uh, when you're working with these larger yarns, you got to kind of keep your eye on it. You got to create your path first, and um, and I'll show you how to do that. So because I had to give it away, I gave away. I love this fabric. This fabric was just gorgeous can you see this oh and I get I always got my batiks from Lund fabrics by the way they they make the best batiks they're just they're just hands down artisan fabrics they're just incredible but this is a BFL uh, core spun yarn I took these little tiny curly curly BFL locks and I spun them into this lumpy bumpy arty farty <laughs> beautiful yarn it's so soft and gorgeous and i thought wouldn't it be cool to put something really swirly and organic on this sort of structured background i thought it would be kind of uh kind of contrasting and cool but i couldn't use the couching foot there was no way you know now i have noticed that you can get some yarns in this couching foot that you really didn't expect that you could but you need to test because you can go along just fine and then hit a you know a larger bump in your yarn and then you're dragging it along the ply and and then it's you know it's just no good so you're gonna take your oh what am I doing here's my camera we're gonna take our open toe foot put it on and then see how it's it's open we can just put our threads back like we always do there's no we you know there's nothing to worry about in your way there and I think I'm a, I'm going to uh, I'm going to restart this because I want to show you from the beginning, and it doesn't really matter because I can overlap that and do it again. So now, just as if it had a hole in the front, we're gonna we're gonna put this under here like so, a little bit towards the back. Now, when you're doing this, you can expect at least once or twice or lord knows how many times you can expect your toe the toe of the foot to get caught in a loop and that's okay just just keep your eye on it and uh oh well i messed that up didn't i hang on guys uh, one of these days i'm gonna get my sewing machine repairman to 
be able to lift this up a little bit. I just, I don't have a lot of clearance and I just really wish I did. So, all right. Now I have a full bobbin, so that's good. Oh, seriously, you stinker. All right, well, I'll just do it that way. This is one I'm weaving with, so I need to have it on a shuttle here. All right, make sure you have a lot of slack. Uh, you don't want to be, you don't want it to be pulling when you're trying to do swoops and curves, and then you you end up with a right angle because you got yanked. So, <laughs> but again, same thing. You want to make sure that you're trying to create that that uh, pseudo embroidery hoop with your hands especially with with uh, with this technique oh my thread's gonna break maybe i'm just not supposed to show you guys this at all <laughs> no hang on if i can run out of bobbin thread i can certainly uh i can certainly re-thread my needle no no problem there except for bad eyesight give me a minute here when i have my contact lenses in it is really hard for me to see it's just, I'm just getting so old. All right. So we'll talk about the weather. There we go. Hey, I got it. Woo! All right. Okay. Let's try it again. Make sure that all is copacetic. And I have the same settings for this. I don't have anything different. I may choose to change my settings, though. I'm going to see if I get... Uh, if I get too much puckering. Now you see when I turn this, you see these wrinkles right here. Those indicate that I need to lift my foot. And the minute I lift my foot, the wrinkles disappear. Okay, so you can only turn it so far before you have to raise the presser foot because you're gonna get the wrinkles and you don't wanna sew those in. So this is the same thing as the couching foot. You just have to pay a little more attention. Here's our wrinkles, we're gonna lift it down. And I'm going to lay out a path, and I have to hold it with my fingers because the foot is not going to automatically guide it. The foot will just plow through everything. So, <clears throat> And of course, the smaller your piece of fabric that you're working on, the easier it'll be. That goes without saying. But, but the open toe foot is pretty easy to use. I mean, i got to say... It opens up a lot of possibilities for different yarns. Um, that was the only bummersome thing that I came across, and I started looking for other open toe feet that may work with my machine. Here's some more wrinkles here. I'm going to use my lifter that you guys would use back here. So we're just going to lift that down and around. And I'm hoping the toe will get caught so that I can show you what that's like. <laughs> but yeah, I'm sure you can imagine. Now, I'm doing swirls and circles and, you know, fun stuff like this, but I want you to consider um, this idea that I had. Hang on, I'm going to make this a little more rounded. This idea that I had and that I was trying out of just laying yarns side by side next to each other, just rows, row after row after row of yarn, and just couching them on until you fill up your whole piece of fabric. How cool would that be? That would be so cool. And that, to me, is like creating fabric with yarn, but you're not weaving, you're not knitting, you're not crocheting. I just think it's cool. So, you know, other ideas. And you can do that, too. I actually uh, I took down a curtain in my daughter's room, and she said, Ah, oh, you can throw that curtain away. I said, You know what? I am going to... Uh, I'm going to use it. And I just did row after row on it. I threw it away. I wish I wouldn't have thrown it away. But it was really cool. Uh, let's see. What is this open foot called? It is usually considered an open toe embroidery foot. And you can ask for an embroidery foot, but make sure that you say open toed because there's a million different embroidery feet. Um, and the most common of which is a clear foot that is just exactly like a regular presser foot, but it's clear and it's not open toe. So the open toe is, is the important distinguishing factor about it. Uh, is the needle in the down position? 
Um, right now, it is. And when you want to lift your presser foot and turn it, it's better if your needle is in the down position. But if you're really careful, it, it doesn't have to be. And you can just you can just keep going, just keep buzzing around without having to you know mess with that. Can you crisscross a row that has already been sewn on? Oh yes, you can. Let me tell you, I <laughs> I have this jacket that I wove three years ago. Still waiting to put it together. Uh, you know, I was just to the point of putting it together. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to couch on this just, you know, to procrastination, you know. Um, and I am actually now going to go back because I used this green. I'll show you it. Um, it's really pretty. Uh, I used the green and I think I'm going to go back with some pink and I'm going to do like a nice row of pink right over. Oh, yeah. As long as it fits under your needle, you can sew it. It doesn't matter which is kind of cool because you can get some really cool effects with, you know, different colors, different designs, you know. So, and I'm really pleased with the open toe foot. Uh, I was disappointed, you know, when the couching foot had such a teeny tiny hole, but this is, this is fine. I, I don't, uh, I don't need the hole. I just need an opening in the front of the foot. And it works fine. And again, the heavier the fabric that you're couching on, if you're not couching on a lightweight cotton like this, it just, it's very smooth and flat and it, it just looks, it, it always looks great, but I especially like it when, um, when I've got some heavier fabric I'm working with. But this will be cool. After I do this, like I said, I'm gonna apply interfacing to the back of this to give it body, make it heavier, and then I'll be able to do more with the fabric. So I think it's cool when, you, um, when you're thinking about yarns as decorations and as trim. Uh, I, I remember being just really, I, I just thought it was the coolest thing. It, it wasn't rocket science, but when I saw, um, when I saw a hand, a hand spinning artist sell her yarn by the yard or by the foot even it, because it was amazing and you know it's like you wouldn't buy a whole skein of it you would want you know five yards of it or three yards of it or whatever and then you could do this kind of thing I mean it would just it just seems to me like a like a really cool idea I don't think I'm set going to be set up for my first in-person show in order to do to do that but maybe someday someday I'll sell yarn by the yard when I when I feel like it is deservedly so it is I mean my yarns are I like my yarns but some some spinners yarns are just they just blow mine away like wow so you guys get the hang of it Keep your hands spread out. Raise the presser foot when you need to, when you, when you get to too tight of a curve. Keep your hands as taut on the fabric as you can. And just keep going. And another thing you can do too, of course, you can draw out your design on your fabric. Um, I'll tell you though, if it's an organic design like this, where it's just circles and loops and stuff, you're gonna find it's easier to just do it freestyle than to try to follow a line. But if you if you have a design, you know that you want to follow. Of course, you know, lay it down and stitch on it. You know, so so yeah, this is gonna be nice. This is really cool. Check this out. Look at that. Now, yes, stitching the yarns flattens it out a little bit. But but even look at look at the um, look at the cool things that are happening. You know with these bubbly parts. I mean, when you flatten them out, they look cool this way too. So I'm, I'm, I'm digging this. I'm going to keep going with this. This is, this is not a failed experiment. Woohoo! <laughs> but you know, you got to have a few failures before you, you know, you have, you have, uh, oh, there's something in front of the, oh my goodness, I'm sorry. Wait, what is it? No, it's not this. Oh, it's the light. There we go. Sorry about that. Doggone it. Here, maybe I need it up higher. There we go. Thank you. Thank, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. 
Yes, thank you. Only couch foot I knew of before tonight was one of the three. <laughs> the couch I'm sitting on. Yes, this is. You know, I was thought I would be all, um, all, you know, hokey and weird and be like, couching. It's not just for couch potatoes. Yeah, well. I don't know where the word comes from. It, it doesn't really describe the technique, you know, with any, I don't know. What do I know? It's probably some historical, you know, uh, related thing. But one last thing I would like to tell you guys, and I'm going to show you uh, just as fair warning. I'm going to just... I think I'm going to stop right here so that I can come back to it and just continue my swirls. Um, but I am just going to cut the threads, but I'm not going to cut my yarn because I want to come back and do more, obviously. Now, I want to talk to you guys about these presser feet sets that you can buy that are really cheap and you get a whole bunch of presser feet and it looks like a great deal. Um, you just just be careful it's mo some machines no problem I you know I actually have tried them I even bought a Bernina shank adapter and they didn't work and let me show you let me show you my buyer beware moment okay um, and I'm gonna take off this foot so you can see so this was a foot that I bought and I thought this thing was just so cool okay it's got this little you see here it's got this screw on it where I can pull pull this back okay it broke well all right so don't unscrew the screw too hard or it'll just come undone anyway what happens is is it uh, oh, I think it goes on the other way but I did. it broke I don't know no biggie I can't use it anyway but it slides back and it made this opening really big and I thought oh I can use this you know for uh, for larger yarns and still have a hole you know to to guide it but the problem was well the problem is this no actually it, it goes back together <laughs> again i think the problem was when i looked closely at the foot this screw was a dead giveaway this is an adapter this is not a genuine bernina foot obviously it's not so what happens is i put this foot on my machine and look at the difference in height you see how much lower this one is let me get them at least how much lower this one is I mean it's almost like a quarter of an inch difference now what happens is is remember me complaining about not having a lot of uh, clearance I can't get anything underneath this foot it just it sits so low to the machine I can't use it so it's twenty dollars wasted so just be careful of that when you're when you're looking for generic um, uh, generic presser feet that are not your brand. Um, you know, sometimes they just don't work, especially if you have a, a more specialized machine like a Viking or a, a you know Husqvarna or those those fancy schmancy embroidery do it all machines. Uh, you got to be careful. They they want you to use their proprietary feet, and there's a reason why. So. It was kind of a bummer, but uh, but let me show you the, um, the the piece to my jacket that I that I finished up, um, just to show you how. I don't I don't ever know which camera I'm gonna do this camera, and hang on a second, you guys. I'm gonna do a little trick, and you're just gonna have to look at me. I'm just gonna be bigger. Okay, <laughs> But this is the scarf that I did. This is a collar, like a little scarf collar thing, and it's going to go, you know, around the around the, the neckline of the jacket and it's going to be some kind of a little stand up or fold over collar. I really don't know how it's going to be. I have to sew it on and then I'll be able to tell what it'll be like. But the whole jacket was uh horizontal stripes, woven horizontal stripes. So I thought, you know, what would be a cool way to kind of break that up a little bit and, and give it some give it some flow so I took this wonderful apple green silk yarn and I couched it all over the pieces I was only gonna do the collar and then I had so much fun that I just went ahead and just did the whole jacket so now 
now what I need to do is, because I went overboard, because I just loved it, it was so much fun, on the scarf itself, I'm going to pick up, there's this really pale pink in here. I'm going to pick up some of the pink, and I'm going to do just a couple lines, just straight, just straight down the scarf, just to make it orderly again, only because, like I said, I, I couched the whole jacket. I couched, I couched it all. I went crazy. This is the sleeve. I couched the sleeve. I couched both of them. <laughs> so I don't know. I think it's going to look great and I'm going to get this finished up. Our very first in-person show. Thank you, Susie. Thank you, Donna. Oh my gosh. You're right, Tony Ann. Oh my goodness. I'm embarrassed. I'm very French and, and yes, you're right. You're absolutely right. I should have looked that up before I started this. Oh, Patrick would just have my head. Patrick speaks French. His Thank you. Yes, couché. Yes, she is absolutely right. Subtle and pleasing. Thank you, Donna. I hope so. I, I went overboard. I thought, oh, my Lord, if this is going to scream, you know, person reacclimating to her sewing machine. You know, ah, look at this. But, yes, so it turned out fantastic. And, again, this kind of fabric, uh, this heavier weight, thicker fabric, Oh, geez, I, I could squish that into the machine, flip it around, make wrinkles. It, nothing happened to it. It just was flat as flat can be. So if you're a weaver, that's also something to think about. They're really great for uh, really great fabrics for couching. And if you're a knitter, too, now you're going to have a little bit a little bit of a problem with knits and crochets. Well, crochet is just, I think, too thick, but it, you're dealing with stretch then. Um, so you'll have to be uh, a little more discerning in the designs that you choose. Um, you wouldn't want anything too swirly because uh, you would just, uh, well, yeah, you could. Why not? No limits. Yes, you can do swirly. You just have to make sure you, you keep the fabric as flat as you can. But what else, what else do I have to talk about? I mean, this was, this was a lot of fun. Um, like I said, I know you guys have sewing machines. I know they're in there. And if even one person is inspired by this to get, haul out their machine and give it a try, I will be thrilled. And that, that's, uh, that is uh, that's all I have to say about that. But anyway, check it out, you guys. This is going to be beautiful. Um, I, I, I see, oh, I'm showing you something that I don't have the camera on for. Oh, yeah. Go me. Let me see. I think I... Golly, did I, I think I just lost my other camera. Did I? I don't know. Sometimes technology escapes me. Maybe that's a sign from above that it is time to say goodnight. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> one more look. This is going to be beautiful. I turned the light off because it just, it glares so much. Let me try this one. That's a little better. But yeah i love that i think that is going to be really cool made up into ah oh, there's so many ideas like i'm working on e-spinner bags and i love taking really super unique fabrics you can, fabrics can do all the work you don't even have to be super creative just choose a cool fabric and you're good to go but anyway thank you so much for joining me um don't forget, uh, we are going to be, Fresh Lotus Design is going to be on WAFA March 28th, that's Sunday, at 4 o'clock. We were kind of a late add-in. I'm not sure if we're on the schedule yet, but um, I was really, really delighted. We had a lot going on, and I was able to sneak in a spot. There must have been a cancellation. I'm delighted. So, March 28th, 4 o'clock, we're going to be showing off some stuff that we are going to have at the Ann Arbor Fiber Fest, which is in April. So you guys will get a sneak preview and I hope to see you all then. And um, maybe, just maybe, one of these days I'll have that jacket done, and I will, I will show you. Don't hold your breath. <laughs> it will get done, I swear. Thank you very much, and you guys have a wonderful night. Um, it was, it was so much fun. Thank you. We'll see you later.